Welcome to Post Tsunami, where we talk about life after the tsunami of sound, a <laughs> concert slash marching band um, at Channel Islands High School. I'm Dicker Duke, and with me is Raynard or RJ. Um, RJ, what's up? What is oh. up? <laughs> uh, thanks for allowing me to be here. I think yeah. it's a really cool idea. Yeah, of course. No, thanks for helping me with, with the podcast. <laughs> stuff. I learned quite a few new things. <laughs> Yeah, no problem. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So, I'll introduce myself to you. Yeah. yeah. So I'm um, Reynard Solomon. Um, I also go by RJ. I graduated class of 2013, meaning mm-hmm. I joined uh, 2009, 2009. <laughs> I spent all my four years in band, and I've also done my... Back then, uh, middle school was only two years. So two years in band in middle school. Mm-hmm. Started in fourth grade. And I still play instruments. Isn't that fun? Yeah, yeah. Back then, <laughs> back then, that was when the elementary like bands started in fourth grade. Because I know like later on, um, yeah, they cut good. like fourth and fifth grade, and they started at sixth grade. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so That happened yeah. for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been through grade school starting in the uh, year 2000, uh, where they were able to have band for fourth grade. And then eventually, you know, with like budget cuts and like people yeah. thinking the arts aren't um, or worth investing, they cut that program. And then yeah. eventually middle school became three years and then band started at sixth grade. Mm-hmm. But we were like one of the lucky ones that had them in fourth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's cool was... now, though, yeah. What's cool now is that um, elementary schools are starting to have their music programs back. Yeah, yeah, they're bringing it back. That's yeah. cool. You're saying before I cut you off. Um, that's okay. <laughs> um, I know with Ocean Views Band, they were thinking about cutting it, and um, this happened around when we were in band. I think actually when mm-hmm. it, when um, like Julian Vince's Eduardo's like that class was still yeah. here. Um, I think Ocean View's band program was in danger of um, being cut. Being cut, yeah. So we had like this this whole concert dedicated to why the band program should still be here and what the band program meant to to us, us as yeah. in like the Ocean View band kids. Yeah, right. Um, that's something that I remember a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, yeah. Like, I remember hearing about it, too. And, like, it's, like, really sad when, like, yeah, a school has, like, a dedicated, like, band or music program. But then, like, circumstances regarding, like, money and, like, the world. True. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, they cut them. But uh, recently, I've seen a resurgence of, like, music programs getting back into schools mm-hmm. and, then, like, an investment in music education in elementary. So, like, that's really exciting for me to see. Yeah, and we'll talk more about that since you're getting into that that field of music education. True. Yeah. So, um, if you were to describe yourself, like your 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 high school band self, like what kind of person were you? Like, like give us more context of who you were in high school. Yeah. So, like, um, let's start a little bit in middle school, like towards the end of it. Like, I was a pretty um, if you didn't know me, you'd say, like, I'm pretty shy because, like, I don't talk a lot and stuff like that. But then for me, not a lot of people know this, but I have a, like, a disability. I'm deaf in one ear, and I've been like that since basically my birth. And because I'm deaf in one ear, I tend to listen more than I talk. And then, like, um, sometimes it's hard for me to understand people, but maybe, like, because of the, their positioning and stuff like that. But I always tended not to talk as much uh, in favor of just, like, listening to people and trying to understand them. Yeah. And, like, sometimes I, I just don't understand them, but they affect their response. And, I'm like, I do that awkward thing where I just nod or something like that. But then, oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was kind of, like, too embarrassed mm-hmm. back then about, like, the fact yeah. that I didn't understand them because I have this, con- like, condition. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like RJ. What's one plus one? <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, you, like you awkwardly laugh or something. Yeah. But well, it's like back then, um, I didn't really talk about it, and like a lot of people didn't understand it. So like I didn't really, or I don't, I don't like blame them or anything. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's like that thing uh, where like you just try to hide your problems as a kid because you don't really right. know how to deal with it. Right. And like. It isn't like really normalized to talk about mm -hmm. um, things like that, but um, in uh, middle school, especially, um, a lot of people knew about me and my personality through the internet, and like through like things like aim chats or like group chats or like forums, because when I was a kid, I spent a lot of time on the internet, and like I did. Not just like gaming stuff, but like I participated in like a lot of forums, a lot of like group mm -hmm. chats with my yeah, friends. Me too. <laughs> yeah. So like there's that like kind of double side of me or of like I'm able to communicate my text better than like socially. Um and it kind of all changed when I entered um mm -hmm. high school, my freshman year in two thousand and nine. Because um mm -hmm. For that, I really like. am thankful for that senior class uh, at 2009 because they were the ones that bring me out of that shell. And like, I've already developed like that personality through like group chats and stuff, like through like text communication. But then being with people like um, basically like Julian, Julian Roque, uh, Eduardo Victoria, and Vince Lavambuno. Um, they were like accepting of like the really dumb stuff and like really rash stuff that yeah. I want to do, like in an effort to be funny or yeah. because I think it's funny. I remember this one time, um, I was talking with like some of the freshmen, like at the end of middle or yeah, some of the seniors at the end of my middle school year, um, mm -hmm. the 2009 seniors, uh, in a voice chat or in a aim chat. And then uh, when Julian met me in person it's like huh you're a lot different than uh, when you're talking online right <laughs> and like that got me like thinking yeah. like about <laughs> just that sentence and then it's like uh basically they allowed they accepting of me of like how awkward i am and how like weird i am but it's able they were able to help me develop into um how i how i am how i was in high school and then ultimately how i am now like I'm like uh some people call me smart. Like I I think I'm com I'm completely average, but I'm just really like doing really dumb things in a safe way because I think it's funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I think it's funny. And like the third thing um is that for me being in band, I think after my freshman year, I've always wanted basically to be a part of something, right? And like just yeah. to leave behind either like a legacy or just leave behind something for people uh, who are coming in, people under me. So then I always had this notion of wanting to do something or like wanting to create stuff. And ultimately that led me to doing a lot for the band uh, in hopes that they would like con continue on and carry it through. Yeah, that's that's so important as... I think teenagers growing up in high school is that mm -hmm. you need that sense of belonging and you're a part of an organization. You're part of something that's greater than yourself. Yeah. And it's and, like, it's a safe space in a community yeah. that I'm glad the freshman or the 2009 seniors created because without that, uh, I wouldn't be able to be like who I am today. You know? Yeah. I think 2000. 10 seniors because they graduated 2010 or yeah, 2009 yeah yeah, 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 yeah. 29 yeah 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 when i, I not... say that i mean like ones from my freshman year yeah yeah we started 2009 yeah, no, yeah. i get you um okay cool um let's move on to uh sorry my phone just activated google <laughs> it, it did that last time too um let's move on to the band memories and Ooh. stories and and any cheese man <laughs> <laughs> with the band yeah yeah 
Um, so let's start off like, what was your favorite favorite year in band? Mm, dude, I don't want to be one of those people that's like, I like all my years in band. <laughs> I kind of did, but I think yeah, yeah. my most fun year I think was like uh junior year and that transition into senior year because like i felt like i did a lot of like um stuff in terms of like producing things for the band and like helping like with like leadership and stuff but honestly my my most favorite year would be freshman year just because like uh it's not a whole like community thing it's like i was able to like just be myself and like learn how to be myself and like discover a lot of like things about me socially but also it's just fun being with the seniors i th- I honestly think the senior class like really influenced me yeah that that class was so impactful um i think everyone can agree <laughs> yeah even andrew from last <laughs> week um we talked about how um i i feel like that class was a big deal because they established sort of the culture of the band and the standards or expectations of the band and how we're supposed to, um, I yeah. guess, act musically and how we're supposed to practice. And... I was like, how to hold up to that standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember um, hearing the stories like back then, um, you know, that whole, I don't know if you mentioned this, but like that thing with the drum line back then. Yeah. <laughs> and like, um, Basically, they came after, like, or maybe, I don't know what year it happened, but um, it's kind of like a reformation that happened or something like that. And, like, I think that's where, um, that's why it was, like, so influential because, like, they had an idea and vision of what they want. And then by yeah. that year, like, they, they nailed it perfectly, at least for me. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely for me, they were a big inspiration going into my drum major years my junior senior year yeah Um, like for example like julian really set the standard for me he set the bar like really high (laughs) Mm -hmm. and um i was like all right i gotta i gotta be at this standard um i have to at least i don't know like i don't know if match is the right word but i have to like follow up on that you know it's like yeah it's like that come up to that level yeah it's like like the, like a student master relationship right or right. like you don't really want to like overtake your master but you want to meet yeah. him at at that place yeah. at that time yeah but then you don't want to let him down too yeah. <laughs> you know he taught you all these things and mm-hmm. you know like when they leave you can choose to like say screw it and throw it out the window <laughs> and just do your own thing yeah but yeah. um i think listening to you know older people's like wisdom and kind of incorporating um yeah like all their knowledge and yeah i think that's good because you know i imagine starting from scratch every year Mm -hmm. that would that would suck so definitely um i tried to take the mistakes that julian made and not try to repeat them and that sort of thing yeah and it's like it's cool like uh for me being like uh, you're my drum major, and then Lauren San, and then seeing um, Paul DeSalas, like just those different three, and then like um, their standards and how they want to do things. So it's like it's so different, but you could tell like where they came from, and I was like how we're maintaining that standard. Mm-hmm. It's so like trying to be the most consistent with um how it was back then. Yeah. Yeah, being consistent is hard just with anything really. <laughs> Super hard. I know we're human. Sometimes you mess up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes you also do amazing things. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we've all done these amazing things over these yeah. these high school years. Um, you mentioned your junior and senior year. Um what what makes you say or what makes you mention that? Um, I think um With the junior and senior year, like with my junior year is when, because I was basically selected to be in leadership, 
mm-hmm. um, my sophomore year, basically as a band publicist. But then, um, I think in the junior year, though, it's like when I started to take the um, role even more serious and just going beyond like the publicist duties. Yeah. Because back then, we didn't have like a historian or something like that. No. Like, I was the one, like, taking all the pictures. I kind of, like, help with the um, the Facebook stuff. Yeah. And, like, creating different programs and things like that. Mm-hmm. But also, like, um, just helping out with leadership in general. Like, yeah. helping with decisions. Um, helping with um, various fundraisers, like Raider Fest mm-hmm. and things like that. Yeah. And, like, I definitely learned, like, a lot of skills in mm-hmm. terms of, like, how do you advertise a thing? How do you design a thing for internet consumption? And like, I don't know, it's fun for me taking all these photos and things like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then senior year when I became um, basically saxophone section leader, uh, I talked about always wanting to create. And then for me, like there was <laughs> always this like weird divide. I think it's like normal of like, um, the different uh, instrument sections. So you got the, like the flutes, and then the clarinets, and then low brass, and then trumpets, and stuff like that. But then I just wanted kind of like to be a bit showboaty in terms of curating like the best section in band. Mm-hmm. So then we just created this thing called the Sexy Saxes, which is um, based off of the Sexy Sax Man. Uh, very oh, popular. Yeah. That was, very that popular. Was, that was the hot meme. That was the hot meme back in 2010, 2011. That was great because there's not a lot of music memes. Yeah. Um. Recently, it's been the coffin, the coffin dance, the coffin dance. Yeah, I, love, I love the coffin dance. But anyways, um, there's not a lot of music memes, and any time that we could get yeah, one, like, it's, it's a big really, deal, especially for bad kids. Yeah, it's like you rally around it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, just me being able to help out with the creation of like sexy saxes like we made a facebook group but then we did like weird bonding events and stuff like that and like eventually like this is after senior uh the saxophones they gave me this nice jacket you're seeing and then they oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> embroidered yeah. my name on it that's really nice yeah my my brother has one too yeah yeah and and it's like for me uh that's kind of like the fruits of your labor thing of like finally coming to this weird fruition yeah yeah i think yeah those are like the hallmarks of why junior senior year Mm -hmm. is building up skills and then just hopefully leaving something behind for the other members of the band yeah i didn't know about the sexy saxes until like now maybe i was just completely oblivious maybe i just didn't care but yeah. i didn't know about it and yeah, um, it is, yeah it's more like prevalent after you left yeah because honestly after <laughs> after you left uh we just like kind of ran the place like lawrence <laughs> the leadership like lawrence and yeah. angel aragon and like the rest of the leadership um yeah, and just kind of like did our thing for um for both benefit and somewhat detriment, but it's, yeah. <laughs> that's that's what happens when you leave a bunch of high school kids yeah. uh, in control. Yeah, I like um with the sexy saxes that reminds me a lot of the sort of like section like salt culture that we yeah. had in Cal Poly's band because we had. With with Cal Poly's band, we had like section shirts, we had mm-hmm. like sectional dinners, like that yeah. sort of thing. It was very like clear that yeah. you were part of like the subculture of the band, and yeah. you would do things that only like the trumpets would get, or like only the saxophones ever get. There would be memes that only that section would get, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we had like sectional shirts too. Like every section had their own shirt, which is really fun to see. And really, you can put whatever you want. So, <laughs> um, it was it was a lot of fun um, seeing all the variations of the, of yeah, the different the shirts, shirts and, and different sections and that sort of thing. Different like customs, cultures, 
or subcultures, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And that's something that I think CI could benefit too as well. Um, because I know in high school, that wasn't really a thing. Um, yeah. It could potentially cause problems, but I think it could do more good than harm. Yeah. For sure. The reason we started Sexy Sex is, is first of all, it was a joke. <laughs> to, <laughs> it's because um, like the sections already, we started doing sectionals more, uh, more like prevalently, like yeah, cause, throughout my later years. Yeah, because we did when I was there. I only mandated it like once a week. Yeah, and you got the whole band room too. Yeah. So. And then uh, we just started spending like a lot more time with each other, and mm-hmm. then like in an effort. Almost to one up the section leaders at the time, which is um Andrew Oresco on trumpet <laughs> and Nigel Aragon on low brass. <laughs> like we wanted like to prove like we had the most unified uh section. No, so. I, I I definitely think you the saxes did. And back then the saxers were like you guys are a pretty strong section, I think. Yeah, um, like you had a lot of like good talent, but also like a lot of people willing to learn. Yeah. And then just being with each other, I think. And for me, just to create that kind of culture as a dumb joke was really <laughs> fun for me. And I don't know, hopefully the other people got something out of it. You know, yeah. not just me. <laughs> um any like memorable moments from like the sexy sax group that you that comes to mind? Mm. Definitely like little bits of um there's this one uh freshman by the time I was a senior, uh named Kate Ann and her refusal to do anything pelvic thrusty. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's funny. Um I think I also was the person that helped started like um movements. Like there were always like an idea, but then um I started going overboard with the movements. Like my saxophone, like the instruction was like put saxophone up, right? And then I tried to do it like uh, up as in parallel to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like Davis's band because they, yeah, they, yeah. they do that stuff all the time. Which um, you kind of have to balance movements with actually playing your instrument. Yeah, it's like there's the musicianship <laughs> part and then there's yeah. like the showy part. Yeah. And then <laughs> you, you could go like totally overboard with the showy yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah, like you can stand perfectly still and you know have like the most beautiful sound, but it wouldn't be very interesting to watch. Yeah. But on the flip side, if you go like way overboard with your movements, but then it just sound like crap, then <laughs> it's not gonna sound good. So there definitely has to be some sort of balance for sure. Yeah. But like we also did like one like sexy saxes bond day. Mm-hmm. I forgot mostly what it was about but i think we just hung out like at the outside of the panda room and like yeah. bring each other snacks or something mm-hmm. well yeah it's i think the facebook group is still up sometimes i get they post in it but it's like a fun little thing to see mm-hmm. do you ever check in on anyone from the group um not specifically maybe i should do some more but uh i see them I see, I see y'all on uh, on Instagram and yeah. Twitter and stuff, and like um, they seem to be doing good. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think this is a good time to bring up the uh, the slideshow or the the photos <laughs> that you the have. Slideshow. I don't know. <laughs> the... So yeah. So again, I was um, band publicist. Uh, I took a lot of pictures in 2010, and then uh, we had an official historian position. Um, I'm I'm allowed to throw him under the bus because he's my friend. Um, Andrew <laughs> Roscoe, you did not do a good job taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's some pictures. Uh, this one. Did you break anything? Are we good? Hold on, I'm not seeing anything. How about now? Is it broken? Okay, I see it. Cool. So this is um. The senior class of twenty thirteen or twenty thirteen. Yeah, you guys were a big class too. 
Like yeah. you guys are pretty thick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming from uh, the graduating class of twenty nine ten, or it's like eight, maybe ten seniors, mm -hmm. and then with um. The next class after that was an Enrique and Janice, right? Yeah, it was just those two. Just those two. And then you guys, it's like a pretty sizable amount. Yeah, we had uh, like six or seven of us. Like we were, there were a lot of us, but um, like Zondra and I were the OGs, I guess you would call yeah. it. <laughs> and like these, this group, I counted all of them. There's 18 people here. And I think mm -hmm. ultimately there was like 20 ish. Like twenty two or twenty three, other seniors that weren't mm -hmm. like that's been associated with the band, but not necessarily like in the band band. Yeah, yeah. But like we were super big. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just remembered for the people on the audio <laughs> only version. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll like we'll describe what we're seeing in, yeah. in the picture. Um. Yeah, but, so this is after our spring okay. concert. And... Yeah. It's basically the seniors' last uh, concert. Yeah. So, like, this is our, our group photo that I mm -hmm. took from a video. And you can see the, the yeah. bad quality. Yeah. And uh, I think I think you guys started this trend, because I don't remember doing this with my class. <laughs> you guys started this trend of after the spring concert, the seniors would come up and have, like, a photo op. Yeah, I think and... I, I remember you guys doing it, but... I don't think we did. You guys did like this really dumb pose. Yeah. No. Um. I've been to a few of the spring concerts, you know, as an audience member, like after yeah. I graduated, and they do it every year. The seniors come oh, up. Yeah. So I think you guys started it. Um, which is really cool. <laughs> trend centers, as they say. Tr trend, yeah. Trend centers. Um, trend let's see what else. I mean, there's there's a bunch of you guys. Um, you could see the mom at the bottom taking a photo <laughs> oh, it so or a family member, and then in the background is everyone else. Everyone um, else, like, just trying to like get away. Yeah, getting away or clean up. Um, after the concert, and yeah. that guitar in the back, I think that's a Maros or was it Mr. Haynes? Because I know Mr. Haynes played with us. Yeah, with the like a strat. Yeah. yeah, with the. I, yeah, it's hard to tell, but um, yeah. The I don't think do they still do the the table shell in the back? They Sometimes did it. I don't see it. Yeah, they did it a few years after you know we left, but then they just stopped doing it. Yeah, getting the tables out were like such a pain. Yeah, it was a pain, but I mean, I don't even know if it helped acoustically. Or not. Like, <laughs> but, just, I don't. I don't think it did. The gym's too big. Yeah. Um, the gym is not really an ideal place for a concert. But, that's what we but, had. Yeah, that's what we had, and we had to do what we had to make do with what we had. Um, and oh, just a random memory that I had of my senior year or your junior year is that um, yeah. that was the first year we had a concert at a performing arts center, and this yeah. was at Oxford yeah. College. Yeah, that was when that venue was brand new. And, I, I, yeah it's like i have pictures of it too in here yeah <laughs> yeah um that was such a memorable moment for me and mm. that's something that i want everyone to experience at least once yeah like um, the we call it the oc pack the Oxford yeah. college for an art center mm -hmm. but um for like us being in the gym all the time being there was like super exciting yeah yeah, it was a big deal. <laughs> it was a big deal. I have right. other pictures. It's a mix. This uh, quote-unquote slideshow is mm -hmm. a mixture of uh, both uh, yeah, cool yeah, yeah. pictures I took and then the fun pictures I took. One of them mm -hmm. being Santa to the Sea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this one. Um, this was in... 2011? No, this is my 20... junior year. Your yeah, this is year. yeah 2010. Because cause of the band shirts, I could tell. <laughs> um, for oh, for the people listening, um, we're making like a human pyramid, and <laughs> there's three of us at the bottom, <laughs> Adam, two in the two. next row, and then and, and then then one at the one top. At the top. Um, and this was at uh, Oxnard Beach Park, I think it was it's called. Is that Oxnard? I think it's Oxnard, or yeah, it is Oxnard. Yeah, one of the beach parks there. Um, 
you know, I know where it is. I, yeah, I just forgot the name, but I think it's Oxide Beach Park. Um, yeah, it was like they have so after like our concert or our um sorry or after our um performance, mm -hmm. uh, getting all the runners hype. Uh, usually we like spend an hour or two waiting for our parents to pick us up, and then that allows us to do really dumb things sometimes. Yep, just let's have create a human pyramid. Yeah, teenagers doing teenage things. <laughs> teenage or this one is our drum major Duke Dow and our assistant drum major Lawrence Ann attempting to do a two person cartwheel. <laughs> oh, too late. Oh, man. Yeah. PC I don't guy. remember this at all, but uh, <laughs> I remember doing stupid stuff like this. Yeah. <laughs> you can see um, Lawrence's cool phone. Yeah, I think the, it was like one of the first ones I had like a. That's the first a Android phone. phone. Yeah, yeah the that's Android. that's the G one, <laughs> HTC G one. Um, first Android phone that had that slide out keyboard. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, then uh, if you zoom in on Duke's pants, you see this wasn't the first time. <laughs> this yeah. I actually have a whole pile of jeans that are just ripped, <laughs> like in the knee area. And I only use those jeans for like outdoor work or if I'm painting that yeah. sort of thing. I'm pretty sure the, the jeans that I have right now in that picture are in that pile. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, another cool thing um, in this photo is like the belt that I used to wear. I don't. Yeah. I don't have the belt anymore, but um, it's a belt with it's a black belt with like music notes on it. That's so um, cool. The Trouble Clef has some notes. I never actually like played it, but um, I think I remember trying to see if it actually wasn't four four, and it wasn't. I think I don't know. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a design thing. Yeah, it was just oh, it was a cool design. And then I also bought it around my wiki, my Wookie. Yeah, your Wookie. Wookie. I remember it's, that. Yeah, it's on my belt clip. And I think it's our last Santa Two C one. This is um, <laughs> we did a lot of dumb stuff. I think it's fun. Yeah, you want to describe it, RJ? Yeah, this one, uh, it's the logo for CI, but built out of people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> On the floor. What else? Remember this, Duke? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is when, um, this is one of the drumline competitions. I actually yeah. looked back at some of these photos um, maybe a couple weeks ago. It's um, all available on, like, the... The Facebook page, right? Yeah, yeah. I uploaded all the photos that I had pretty much on there, mm -hmm. um, so you can go back and see all these photos. Because I think, um, I think I did, and um, mm -hmm. your guys's class did a really good job of posting everything. Yeah, on social media. Um, so all this is online, but um, what we're seeing here is just the. I think this is the gym of the high school. That was holding the drumline competition. Yeah, it's uh, the logo was the Lobos. I think the next picture has the name. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> this is the the sign um, mm -hmm. in front of the high school, Los Amigos High School, Den of the Lobos. It's pretty cool. It's uh, somewhere in LA. Yeah, and then in this one, we cut up a piece of cardboard, <laughs> and then it says, yeah, it says "Band was here," right next to the school sign. Yeah. I That's think, pretty cool. Yeah. This one, <laughs> you remember? Um, <laughs> yeah, Six this Flags. was at Six Flags. Um, yeah, let me. I'll I'll describe this one. Um, so we were at Six Flags, and um, to put it shortly, I was uh, I was going through like a bad time, <laughs> and I don't know. It was just captured <laughs> on video, um, and. I don't know. There's a, there's a caption. So it's me standing in front of this like Skittle <laughs> poster, and it says, "In Canada, Skittles are called Skittles." <laughs> um, and I don't know. I I think there was some caption, yeah, about like me to... being like sad about <laughs> Skittles in Canada being called Skittles <laughs> or something. Yeah, like I remember. That. I remember that. I remember posting it. It's 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 probably on the. <laughs> the facebook page yeah yeah right now i don't have that i don't have that camera anymore but i still have that bag the bag is right here okay, okay. <laughs> I'm a window. Yeah, well, remember remember your pac-man hat yeah i still well not maybe not that one but i have the same exact pac-man hat because i bought a second one 
<laughs> all right story time ready so yeah. if you look on my camera i don't know if this shows up but um this is the exact moment duke lost the original pac-man hat yeah it was <laughs> funny like the six <laughs> bucks ride the captured it yeah i remember when the dip was happening yeah I I felt the hat like graze along my hand, and if I just like if I just you know clasp my hand, literally like a second or two sooner, I would have got my hat, but it got away. <laughs> and like yeah, that was like really sad, dude. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, the band went to at least in my time Six Flags twice. One my freshman year, and then one uh, your senior year, right? We did it both of my years, my junior and senior year. And I think from what Andrew said last year, you guys, or last time you guys did it the year after that, and then it transitioned to Disneyland. Oh, like yeah. Yeah. I remember going to Disneyland. Oh, uh, maybe you guys did both your senior year? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Six Flags is fun. What else is in here? Oh, this is one of the Bond days. Um, I had a really bad tan. I still have that bad tan. <laughs> this, yeah, yeah. This is um. This is. This was going into what summer was this? Yeah. Well, twenty eleven. Yeah, it is twenty eleven. Is this the summer? Maybe, maybe these timestamps are wrong. I think. Yeah, because my because we, yeah because because yeah, Monica's in the picture. That's why. <laughs> Twenty eleven. Um. But yeah, in in this picture we have like a bunch of things to make s'mores out of. So we got yeah, so we got some oh, cram right. crackers. We got some uh, like marshmallows, chocolates, yeah, cookies, marshmallows. Hershey's. But then I just, some. It might be me. It might have been me goading someone on, but like we just stacked them <laughs> in a tower. But look at this perfect physics. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. This is also fun. I don't know if Andrew told you about it. Uh, no. <laughs> not the, nope, not this one. So basically, what happened here is that someone brought a knife to the same pond day. Huh. Everyone, everyone else on, <laughs> on the beach because someone brought a knife because of the girls are cake or something. And then uh, it's like me and Andrea hanging back while everyone else was playing volleyball. And like there's a bunch mm -hmm. of seagulls. And I thought it'd be funny if I took pictures of Andrew pretending to throw the knife at the seagulls. And then he oh. just threw it at the wall. <laughs> and then we basically dented someone's knife. Anyway, it's a fun story. Dang. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that at all. You were, I, I didn't think you were there. <laughs> but um, yeah. Uh, so, in band, sometimes after events, you just get into fun antics. Here's um, uh, your leadership messing around at the boat. <laughs> yeah, this is at um, Chowan's Harbor. Yeah. These are probably one of those smaller events. Maybe. Yeah, and it's like uh, this picture is the overview from the bridge in Channel Islands Harbor looking over the toppers. I think this is when we like uh, after an, an event. We just walk all the way to Toppers, and it's probably like, a, like not a few miles, but probably like two miles long of a walk. Yeah, yeah, it's still a sizable amount of walking, and I'm curious, like, when did that Toppers get built? Because I still, <laughs> in my mind, I still think it's fairly new. <laughs> it's, it, every time I go in there, it's like, it seems modern. Yeah, exactly. It seems like well kept. Like I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, and that's us inside the toppers. Oh, it's just me. Of uh, it's just me. Um, staring at the camera on the phone, staring at the camera. I think Archie took this one. <laughs> See this one, uh, Pismo Beach. One yeah. So this one it's um just like an overview at the band at pismo beach and you could see me in the front in the drum major uniform mm. um and in the back which it looks like it's eight steps <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm like counting <laughs> it's like you have like a, a measure of like yeah. 
cones, like five yeah. feet, and then you yeah. just <laughs> scale it. I found out um, being in Cal Poly's band that um, if you want to be eight to the five, every step is twenty two point five inches. This is fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, the band is in the back. Looks like we're we're playing something. Probably probably playing the march, but this is in like the staging area. Yeah, this is the warm up area. Yeah. Then um, <laughs> we're a bunch of crazy kids. This guy, Mark Galimba, real <laughs> real physical comedian, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, he played um, he played tuba and snare. If I remember. Yeah, correctly. he he started uh, middle school with percussion. And then he he picked up like low brass. This is a picture of um, Mark holding a bunch of our hats over a highway overpass. Yeah, that was a cool overpass. Um, <laughs> when I went to school, I would pass by it, and you know all the Pismo. Back, <laughs> so that was fun. This one, I don't know if you were here, but this is um, I think you were. This is uh, the band. This is the band playing at our football's football team's first GIF game ever. Yeah, Santa Monica. Yeah, and Santa, yeah. 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 And again, we're a bunch of dumb kids, but we saw this giant porta potty and we liked it. <laughs> yeah, it's just a picture of uh, Ray Angel and Andrew next to a porta potty um near the track. And um I remember being at Santa Monica and I remember the band like being kind of like an <laughs> They were kind of like asses <laughs> um, because they would, I forgot what they did. Like they would, they would play when we would play. And um, like, I remember them playing word up and just like, like shoving that in our face. Yeah. It's kind <laughs> of like, on purpose. yeah. Yeah. I was like, damn. And they were a nice band too. Um, <laughs> I think they were, they had like twice as many people that we had. Yeah, they're a big band and like they yeah. did a field show during a uh, halftime. Yeah. This is, um, yeah, but for us, it was exciting because um, we never been to a CIF game. Yeah, that was a big deal, it's especially yeah. yeah, considering you know in the past we we're always like last in the district. Yeah, you're so um, last. Yeah, but my senior year, like, like shout out to my senior class, but like they really <laughs> stepped it up. We like won almost every game. Yeah, dude, that, Even that year. <laughs> Um, so impressive in a way <laughs> comparatively but um after this game uh it was uh me andrew lawrence and angel and then we were just it was like what is it two, two or uh pretty much midnight mm -hmm. and you just bought a bunch of food at mcdonald's mm. we bought <laughs> two mcribs uh 40 mcnuggets <laughs> for cokes also, Lawrence for some reason wanted apple slices. I think we had he a joke separately. <laughs> <laughs> we had to pull up to the register and say, "Can you add apple slices?" Yeah, yeah. So for fifty-four cents, we got apple slices. Yeah, for the people, yeah. <laughs> it's, for the people listening, it's it's just a picture of two receipts, yeah, and <laughs> the second receipt only has the apple slices. <laughs> Lawrence really wanted them. <laughs> This is, yeah, this is after that CIF game. Yeah. I think, yeah, we took the bus there. Yeah. And then it was like we got back pretty late. Mm -hmm. This next one. Oh, this is one of the uh, Christmas parades. We found a Puss in Boots. Mm -hmm. And then he starts to Taylor Morales and Andrew Rusco looking pretty happy. Yeah. <laughs> and then more Christmas parade stuff. This is like the entire band. Uh, I think this is what year is this? I think this is um twenty eleven because I'm playing, which is yeah. So yeah, if right. if you don't know, we back then we had this tradition where, um, if you were the drum major and you were a senior, you played in the Oxford Christmas Parade, mm -hmm. and you had your assistant drum major or whoever the other drum major was. Yeah, they would lead the band, oh, and that was like. I didn't yeah. realize with your team of yeah, I, I still have that that Santa hat. It has so many pins now because I've been to every single two at Christmas. Well, almost every single two at Christmas yeah. since like 20, um, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 
Um, that the the, the Offering Christmas parade that was supposed to be the the parade where yeah the assistant um, drum major right yeah the assistant drum major that was sort of like their first yeah. their first gig. Oh yeah, this these are some of the pictures from um the OC pack. Again, like the sexy saxophones. Like look at these handsome ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this is during like dress rehearsal, right? Yes, yeah, this is the day before. Uh-huh. Which um we we just like did stage check and stuff. Mm-hmm. Which is our drum line. Like like the it's like a really professional venue and it's like, I I really liked it and I wondered why um like we weren't able to get that venue again. Yeah, um I can I can speak a little bit about the back end. So Mr. Terrell tried to get the venue for free for the band. Yeah. Um and he's like trying to put in like the community aspect of the band like hey yeah, this could really yeah. yeah this could really help the community and um help showcase the talent we have in our community you know stuff like that mm-hmm. but then oc was like nope you still gotta so to to book the venue you have to pay i think it was like 900 dollars for like a day something yeah. like that and yeah yeah so you know Terrell tried to smooth talk his way <laughs> <laughs> into getting the venue for free, but and he he already built this expectation with the band that we were definitely going yeah. to perform like, at the pack, right? At the OC yeah. pack. Um and I guess OC just wasn't budget budging, so um <laughs> Terrell caved in, like, all right, we'll pay the nine hundred dollars. It might have been like eighteen hundred because the dress yeah, also counts as a day, right? We, yeah, we use two days. Yeah, like so their 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 staff needs to be there. Yeah, yeah. So that's eighteen hundred dollars, like it's gone <laughs> from from our um like bank account, and that's why we haven't been able to do it again because the band cannot afford eighteen hundred dollars <laughs> per performance. Yeah, it's um, like funding and all that stuff. Yeah, like. I really wish other band members had this sort of opportunity because we're all just so used to the gym and then like it's it doesn't um give you like a sense of like hey we're doing this performance on stage. Yeah. It just seems like another like night at school. Yeah. Like, oh we're just performing. <laughs> um, yeah, because like being at the OC pack is like it's like a new venue and it's like it's a yeah. big stage even though it's yeah. still kind of small but it's like it's still like professional looking i mean like yeah yeah you get a stage like <laughs> you get a stage like it's this cool lighting this is um the picture is the drum line um being on stage for dress rehearsal but it's like it was just really exciting for us as musicians and then uh, for me personally I haven't mentioned this yet, and I'll mention it later, but um, I'm like a music teacher <laughs> now in a way. I like trained to be a music teacher. But like something like this, um, students actually do like do deserve yeah. like a chance to perform like on a stage like this. Yeah, it provides like that platform for students. And for us at CI, we don't really have that platform. We have to ghetto rig the gym <laughs> to do that. And over the years, we've gotten like lazier and lazier because we don't even bring out the shell anymore. <laughs> we used to we used to have like we we used to go like ASB mode and have yeah. posters in the back and yeah, it's have like some artwork stuff up in the rafters. Yeah, but even I don't like, think we even do that. Blue tarp. <laughs> yeah, we don't put down a blue tarp anymore. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I like the next picture is uh the Duva Christmas people practicing in front of them mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, that's that's cool because uh, Tuba Tim actually came and conducted that segment. Oh yeah, that's right. He yeah. came out. Yeah. Um, if you go to the Facebook page and you go to that concert, he mm-hmm. there's a picture of uh, of him conducting the band, which is really cool. That's right. And um, now that I'm in the Ventura County concert band, he plays tuba yeah. in the Ventura County concert yeah. band. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's. 
Yeah, it was cool seeing. It's cool seeing him every week. I actually sit right behind him because the mm-hmm. trumpets are right behind the tubas. Mm-hmm. The tubas sit in their own like corner. They don't. They they actually don't sit with the rest of the little brass. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they sit like right in the back behind the trumpets. Um. So I I sit behind him, which is interesting. Just <laughs> fun side note. But when we're actually performing, um, the tubas are like right in the middle of the band like literally in the middle of the band so we have like um we have two sides where mm-hmm. there's like trumpets on one side and trombones on the other mm-hmm. side right. and then right in the middle are the tubas um yeah and then, and then, be- and then behind the tubas are all, all of our percussion yeah um, yeah it's like that in most uh modern symphonic bands like when yeah. i went to see sun and that they're a wind band the tubas are often like either like in the center in the back or like on rafters on the back yeah because like uh they need to be heard and like yeah. the entire band needs to hear them yeah those tubas are definitely like the anchor of the band tubas and the uh, percussion yeah sure. <laughs> the other one doesn't make don't even matter get rid of <laughs> only percussion no one matters just no one else matters <laughs> yeah so it's like more common theme of um really dumb stuff this is Lauren Sand pretending to eat out of maybe he is eating out of trash can. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Uh, winter concert. You, you, maybe that's why they wouldn't let us back. We just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I rem- it wasn't. It wasn't the winter concert, but um, I think at the jazz concert because we also had a jazz rehearsal because we yeah. um, did a sound check for. Um, the OC pack someone I'm not gonna name I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> put them on blast but like someone stole some soda in the fridge <laughs> I remember and, that um, yeah, I mean it's just high school kids being high school kids um, yeah it's like our, it's our first time at the venue cut us some slack yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that, that uh, we, we probably should have made it clear no stealing <laughs> at the venue um, yeah, sometimes you make mistakes and it's like yeah hey, it's okay yeah, but uh, yeah, in, in in that last picture, it's um, it's Brian looks like he's getting stabbed with a clarinet. That's like <laughs> three we, times put him, we put him in the trash can. And then yeah. we, I'm jerking, they're just hitting with the clarinet. Well, mm-hmm. we, we need to, <laughs> next picture. Um, again, it's like this is the drum line uh, on that stage again, but in our um, the actual performance. Oh, yeah, the actual performance. Yeah, and then in the back, there's the um, there's the band banner. Yeah, the which, band banner. Yeah, we didn't really use, but I really like that banner. Like, it just looks really cool. Yeah, I think um, it it deserved to be used other than in a parade. <laughs> More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then even in parade, I don't remember us using it that much because we had banners. Yeah, like, like the squad banners. Like the squad banners. Like acting as our banners. Yeah, I think like one or two times we'd have like carriers yeah. doing that whole thing. Yeah, I think um St. Patrick's the St. Patrick's parade we used it. Mm-hmm. Next picture. Oh. There's oh man. This, <laughs> this, there's this I was looking through these pictures again, and there's like this weird phenomenon. Maybe I like encourage it of like my friends or like other people or basically my friends planking. Yeah. Like, planking. <laughs> For you kids that don't remember, <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically you just be like a wooden plank board on top of a thing, right? So this picture is um, one of my friends, Alexis Amaro, planking on <laughs> the cool rock structure in the, ju- in the the jungle gym area of Dockside Beach Park. Yep. I think I have more planking. This is oh, him yeah. planking the just other way. View. Yeah. And you can tell that it was your guys' junior year or my senior year because yeah. of the Angels band yeah. shirt. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Lawrence had this particular <laughs> way of planking in which he puts his leg over his arm, over his shoulder. And that's what you see here. Uh, is we're, it, we're seeing. Is it planking at that point? <laughs> <And it's sad. laughs> it kind of just looks like roadkill. Yeah. He looks like it looks really flexible. Like you have to be really flexible to put your leg over your head like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he did it. I think he's at this point he is like doing like splits or something. 
Yeah. And then here's um Andrew Orozco attempting to plank on um <laughs> a traffic cone. And then here's Andrew Orozco yet again planking on a trash can. <laughs> this is I think this is also at Oxford Beach Park. This is um, this yeah, this is, these are all the same. And yeah, then they're... here's him doing it <laughs> on a pole. That looks painful. It's that's I significantly smaller. <laughs> I don't know, planking was a thing. Yeah. Uh, no one really planks now, but that was like the hot meme back in like 2011. Oh, RJ, your camera. Live. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, I can describe the photo while you bring your cam back up. Um, so this is another photo at the Oxford Beach Park um, after Sand to the Sea. And... There's this thing where you make a table from four people, um, but you have to like lay down in a particular way and in a particular sequence so that everyone stays stable. <laughs> so I'm in this picture. I'm on Lawrence's crotch, and then <laughs> Lawrence has to do the same thing, but he has to do it on on Ray's crotch and then Ray's Ray's head is on Andrew's crotch and then Andrew's head is on my crotch. So that's how we we stabilize um each other. Truly a work of engineering. Yep. I would say. <laughs> yeah, just these little moments in band, like I completely forgot about this, but just little these little things like really um make band band you know this i don't know yeah it's like <laughs> um our fun antics a bit unsupervised but we were we we're trying to maintain like a safe community anyways yeah so like you sure no one got hurt uh hopefully no one got hurt doing this <laughs> <laughs> um here we have basically a person laying down on the floor another person planking on top of them another person planking on top of them uh, uh, one person sitting on the two people that are planking and lying on the floor, and then Lawrence doing his thing again. <laughs> Lawrence is just <laughs> on the side, <laughs> on the side in the front, doing his leg over his shoulder thing. Mm -hmm. Um, that's we like to have fun around here. And then uh, I think this is the last one of this set. Mm -hmm. it was Lawrence reverse reverse planking, if you had to call it that, on the trash can? <laughs> yeah, this is when you're facing up versus facing oh, down because yeah. usually when you're playing you're facing like your, your your face is like facing the ground but this this one your face is facing the sky <laughs> and then you can see ray taking a picture in the back <laughs> see oh this is um uh, one of um the saxophone christmases they held yeah. them at the ronald reagan park or ronald reagan museum mm -hmm. and then uh this is lauren doing his thing again <laughs> I think when you when I learned that he was able to do it, I wanted to take more pictures of him with it. Yeah. Oh man, this picture. Um, this is when we were at the library, and it was during one of our leadership meetings. I think. Um, I think back then I might have held maybe a little too many meetings. <laughs> um, like it was starting to get a little bureaucratic, yeah. but um. I don't know. I guess that was sort of my style of leadership is that like if if the leadership ever goes kaput then you have like documents and yeah. things set in stone for the organization to rebuild itself. And that was, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah, because um, like we started to have more things like a secretary taking notes during the meeting and like uh, basically a written record of what's going on. But also like um was it like documents or whatever being created just to help it uh help the leadership move on and like have things set in stone rather than just like pass everything down orally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what that's what I was trying to do. I didn't really get to finish what I wanted to start because obviously now like all the things that I did don't aren't even in play <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> but um i don't know I, I try to pass down what you know yeah. what, I, what i know 
Yeah, then I think uh, you started like a certain precedent that uh, we wanted to follow. Because I'm not sure if you're there too, but our leadership to, for the class of 2013 uh, wanted to create like a band constitution. Yeah, I started it. Um, yeah, there you go. We never finished it though. Yeah, I was, remember. Um, from what I remember from talking to um, like people like Warren and Angel, is that um, we th- I we think Andrew had the final draft. And then he has was the one that's supposed to like really finalize it and then send it to Lawrence and then you to like approve of it and make it a thing. But then it all stopped at Andrew. Again, I'm able to yeah. do this because he, he's one of my best friends. <laughs> I think I think you also have to um send the constitution to ASB to make it like yeah, like official more, official, right? Yeah. Like as a club, something like yeah. that. I, but like, I think you wanted to do it. Um, make make sure uh, band leadership gets like the first look at it before yeah. sending it. But um, these leadership meetings were honestly pretty productive. I like them. I like I like the meeting rooms in the library. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is the South Park, uh, South Oxnard Public Library. Um, I forgot when it was built. Do you remember when it was built? Oh man, probably. I want to say between 2005 and 2008, 2009, something like yeah. that. It was fairly new. This was fairly new. For sure. Yeah. I remember um, it being new in high school, like when I first yeah. started high school. Yeah. And for us back then, the band was, for this year in this picture, the band was like 50 going on 60 strong, I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah. And Definitely a big band. Yeah, we were... Well, relatively big band for us because when I started, um, my freshman year, there were like 25 of us. Mm. And I literally thought the band was going to die because we didn't have the numbers. I mentioned this with Andrew. Um, but then your guys' class came in and I was like, all right, we're good. Like, <laughs> um, Yeah. And then we just kept growing on from there. And so I think in my mind, like, we needed more organization. We couldn't just let three people run the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, in the past. I like, back then, too, I was like, we had this running joke of, um, of, like, kind of, like, the big three that ran the whole thing. Yes. And I remember uh, you wanted to change that. And, like, it did. It did change. Yeah. Like, a lot of, even though, like, we didn't really stick to our designated positions all the time, a lot of people had a lot more responsibility, and responsibility could be like diverted into different parts. Yeah, and I think that's what helped make made um our bands like pretty successful. Uh, these next ones, I don't want to mull too over about. So I'll just skip them. I remember, <laughs> remember Foster the freeze. um the Foster's freeze. Yeah, that Foster's freeze. Valley. <laughs> Yeah, that fault just freezes. At least I want an Oxar. It's gone. Like it's <laughs> level. <laughs> but after that meeting, we walked all the way down to um <laughs> the Foster freeze. Uh, one last two raw. Um, this one, it's a picture of us going into the van, getting ready for our middle school visitations. Uh, Mr. Terrell rented this um nice car, but it could only fit us. It could only like, fit like half, half of yeah half yeah. of the people that were going. Yeah, so we had to make two trips. <laughs> As typical high school students go, we did a bunch. This is Andrew attempting to jump from the back of the car <laughs> into like the front, the the the, the seats. Dang. Right? Dang, we should have had a we should have had Andrew like on this episode. Like <laughs> he's in like half the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, again, this is Andrew plinking on um one of the. Basically, the the director's share of the middle school. Yeah, this is a black stock. Yeah, this is a black stock. Again, um, more planking, but again, three people: uh, Lauren San, John Sabay, and Angel Aragon. Uh, for some reason, I, I I I don't really understand the planking, but you know. I, it was the hot meme back then, so we all did. <laughs> this is um, the parking lot of Black Stock Middle School. Of um, I think there's Ansel Andrew. Andrew plinking on the speed bump. 
Angel Aragon in the background. That looks pretty comfortable. He's like right <laughs> centered. <laughs> uh, this is one of our rallies. A lot of uh, cool pictures. Yeah, and um, we're not in uniform. It's just like it looks like one of those lunch rallies that. Uh, yeah, these are the lunch rallies. Yeah, and wow, everyone looks so young. <laughs> <in this picture. laughs> I know, right? Yeah, person who sticks out to me the most is like Amaro because he's like he's wearing that blue tennis jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mario's like in these pictures. Like, I'm always like really surprised because yeah. I see him like every so often. Yeah, like we still keep in touch. But, like, he yeah, still I kind of looks the same, but he feels older in a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> We're gonna breeze through these pictures. Six Flags. Six um, Flags. This is Andrew on a horse. The 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 rotary looking cool the shades yeah the aviator shades and then andrew took his aviator shades or amara took his aviator shades on his <laughs> squid on top of him um i think this is andrew's favorite squid mm -hmm. does he still have that i don't know Do you know no mm. <laughs> but yet again <laughs> okay game. this is this is just getting dangerous now <laughs> <laughs> You went hard on the flanking. <laughs> um, I think this is one of the last um, rallies. Yeah. 2013. Um, fun. Yeah, okay. This one is crazy. I remember this one. Like, okay, yeah. You can see the picture yeah, after this one. Yeah. But um, we were we were bored um, one time before the rally, and we had time yeah. to kill. And this is when, like, the birth of band battles, like, within... <laughs> the ci band started <laughs> um i made it a point to not do it like every single time because i know it gets yeah. like it's like it's know, kind of it's like kinda... um, say me after a while yeah yeah um but this is a big deal like so we split our band in two to make two smaller bands and then we just had a band battle <laughs> and <laughs> andrew went so went hard so during the band battle yeah that he bled in his mouthpiece yeah. and you can see it in this picture so basically here. i think it's just walking around and then like he puts his trumpet into his face and then the, the lips hit his teeth and then well avert your eyes if it's too graphic there's a little bit of blood <laughs> in his mouth <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah but he was okay he, he made it out okay yeah it wasn't uh serious or anything yeah no but yeah that was a fun band battle Thing. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Band battles are fun when um they're unique. Yeah, when you sprinkle them in, it's fine. Let's see, uh, this one. As I fix my webcam. Uh, yeah, we. This is uh Bandcamp, twenty twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve, which is uh my senior year. Yeah, the summer going into your senior year. And then, uh, yeah, this is actually when Noxie, yeah, they, uh, <laughs> we were able to practice in the college at States Park again. And then, uh, but we did the music portion in the band room or in yeah. like this, but our band was kind of big and he didn't want to stay inside the band room. So he took the trash can as like the podium. Mm -hmm. And then we had Lawrence conduct the entire band. Like this. Yeah, look at that brass line. Like so many trombones. And I love it. Um yeah. that's interesting that you guys put them in the front. Yeah. Because uh, I know some bands compose the the block like that. Yeah, because we wanted to do it uh for this at least this rehearsal, like kind of like how uh most uh modern parade uh, mm -hmm. bands do it. Which is having the low brass in the front and then in the back, that's when you have um mm -hmm. like the woodwind line and stuff like that. Yeah, do you know why bands do that? Um, it's mostly uh just for different sounds. Mm -hmm. So it's like typically uh the brass, the trumpets stuff has like the melody, so you put them in mm -hmm. front. Uh the low brass like helps keep the time and stuff. Uh so you put them in the middle near the front. Right. And uh, then the woodwinds, the clarinets, and the saxophones, 
like kind of have like that little twinkle sparkle to the music right but you could only they don't project as much right like as the horned instruments like the bell front facing instruments so then you get to hear them more as like um as the audience member as like they come towards you Mm -hmm. yeah so you hear the melody first and then you hear like the the twinkling the sparkle the pizzazz yeah yeah Yeah, the the texture of yeah and typically anyways in most marching arrangements the saxophones also double the melody with the horns Mm -hmm. so it gets still reinforced in that and then typically you put like the uh, marching percussion in the middle but you can have them in the back yeah kind of curious what we're playing in this picture probably the march (laughs) yeah probably the march yeah uh fun antics this is lawrence and attempting to balance on that same trash can uh (laughs) gets the podium in well he did it uh at least that's the second when he (laughs) he took the picture (laughs) probably like um a few seconds yeah yeah these next few pictures are um the band marching and like we see we still kept that um same setup so like uh you're marching through stuff like that. Yeah, even though like there's only five, six ranks of musicians, it's pretty sizable for what we had. Yeah. At drum line. I kind of feel bad for the mallet percussion. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, they like had, they, yeah. The mallets and the bells bad. died after I think this year, actually. <laughs> like they had the uh the drum line has like the typical CI cadence. And then um they had this cool bell part I remember my freshman year, but no one really wrote it down. Yeah. I think it's yeah, it just made it on the spot. <laughs> then here we have uh VC star reporter Tom Kiskin and Bruce Lee. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Lawrence Ann. Uh we, we we don't make fun of him because he's Chinese, but he's part Chinese, part Filipino, and he kind of looks like Bruce Lee. Yeah. Um, what this is also pretty memorable too, because uh, this is the first time, or basically Tom Kiskin, that's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um he joined us for uh, this parade, just because he did this um bit. Yeah, he was doing like a piece like, about the band. Like a series about yeah. um I think. And then uh yeah, he he joined us for a few rehearsals. We let him play cymbals and then um yeah, he marched with us. This is really yeah, cool. That was pretty cool. That's a pretty cool view. It's like a bottom view of the band back yeah, then. This is when I got more daring with my photos. <laughs> like I laid down on the floor and took cool angles. Yeah. And uh, this one's another view of the marching parade. Um, yeah. Let's see. This is uh, one kids playing bond- with fire. Yeah, one of the bondies that we had at um, I forgot what's it called? <laughs> the this is College of States Park. College of States Park. Yeah, there we go. I used I used to live right next to this park, so <laughs> I wonder why I forgot it. Um. And let's see, what year was this? Because Eduardo's in the picture. Um, it says I took it in 2012. I think he came back. Yeah. That's just to see us miss, just to see us miss with the grill. We had <laughs> such a lot of problems with this grill. There I was think, a, like we didn't really understand how it worked. There was that one band bond day where like half the band bought a Little Caesars pizza. Do you, do you remember that? <laughs> there was like fifteen boxes in a stack. Yeah, like we, we, like we all went to the the Little Caesars at different times and this is brought pizza. Yeah, we had so many boxes that we had to have people bring them home. Like, <laughs> I remember that. That was funny. <laughs> See, and then just the big, big um picture like Tom Kiskin's back here yeah I think yeah and planking like (laughs) at least I I would want want these photos to serve as like we had a lot of good times fun times and like a lot of them are really dumb but you know if all these photos serve as like um, 
a message is that like we definitely had such a big com- camaraderie yeah like beyond like sections beyond like um what instrument we played yeah um the band was such a really good community and like allowed like a lot of us to like explore um not just ourselves but like our friendships with each other like create memories with each other yeah and we can thank terrell to a certain extent based on (laughs) how he um laid out the leadership or yeah. made us lay out the leadership like, like he was very hands-off yeah it was the... very student-centered yeah and like even though like it kind of was a double-edged sword for us yeah um i felt like like with uh your year um the class of 2010 which is my freshman year and then um our year leadership we had like people with um just like drive and passion, but also understanding of like how things work. Um, that we were just able to keep it going. Like a lot of a lot of like groups of students and like a lot of bands can't really do what we're we're able to do. Yeah. And like this only came from um student leadership, uh people acting responsible, and then just like people just acting like sensible. <laughs> yep. I have so oh. many other pictures that yeah we can take up the rest of the day we'll just flash through <laughs> really quick but uh, uh, shout outs to um alejandro for having this beautiful smile you know yeah he's beautiful <laughs> uh this photo shout out to uh paul de Salas and uh him doing a marching bear era uh, the saint patrick's parade mm-hmm. which is an awful parade because you march uphill yeah, I I never got to do that parade because uh, you know the SAT. <laughs> the SAT. <laughs> I remember it fell on like bad days too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we like to have fun here at CI. Oh, this is the last picture. This is one of my favorite ones. We mm-hmm. uh, I used this prop for a film. Someone made anime eyes, and we <laughs> have a a horse doing piano. <laughs> okay. So this was one last thing I just want to breeze through. Um, so I was the one that made the um, the band banquet. My camera was kind of messed up. Mm-hmm. Okay. The band banquet um, multimedia. Yeah. And that well, was like, the first year you guys did like interviews, right? Yeah. So that sort of interview style. Me being the ambitious person I am and not knowing my limits uh (laughs) before this i did two video projects for different classes and then this one is like the biggest one i did this is an hour long i was supposed to upload it to um youtube uh probably five years ago but i didn't (laughs) i I think i still know the credentials so (laughs) if you want to upload it You know, to so, this day, I still haven't seen it. Um, it's an hour yeah. long, so maybe I don't want to watch it on the yeah, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe yeah, after. we're gonna skip through it. But um, this is definitely one of my most ambitious projects. And looking back at it, I think it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I don't want this to get DMCA strike. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. again, it's like music video. This is the first time I think like someone has done this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And like I've been to another band banquet or something and like they did a video of it. So I was like, hopefully I inspire people. But uh, <laughs> here's the thing too. We had 20 seniors, right? It's a lot. Yeah. How much time did you give each senior? I wanted to be respectful. And I think I try to cut it down to five minutes each. Mm. Even five times twenty is like, <laughs> like an like an hour. That's a lot, yeah, almost two. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of people contributed it. Let's see, I don't want to put anyone on the spot here, so let's go to my interview. Okay, and yeah, then... we can watch that one. <laughs> so I I'll let people it. pick their songs. <laughs> <Mute it. laughs> I don't want to get striked. <laughs> okay so yeah people submitted pictures there we go (laughs) 
I'm pretty awkward at this point, anyways. That, that. <laughs> So well, that's basically the interviews. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty awkward, or, you know. Yeah, it was um, I don't know who did it. Either the year after your year or the year after that, but um, what they did was that they took the question, yeah, and they took every senior's response to the question, and they spliced it all into one like portion. Yeah, so they asked, it, right? Yeah, so. I really like that editing style. Instead of like just having one person like for five minutes, they did yeah. the they answered like that question but for everyone and then they moved yeah. on to the next question. I, that, that was really cool. Yeah, like I, I think I've seen that one too. Where like they're able to like shoot other people in different locations mm -hmm. and too stuff. So it's like really interesting. But um yeah, I think for me, like I'm just like kinda like new at this. It's like the first time I'm doing it. And just like trying to respect everybody, like keep it more in line towards how we did it before, which is like that interview question. We'll yeah, because be before now or before this, before your senior year, we just did it like text. You know? Yeah, which and I wanted, which is fine. Yeah. But um, I really like the interview style. I, I'm surprised I didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah, I think this took like like way too much of my time. I did this like uh, in three weeks. And I spent like some sleepless nights on it. But like, I like this ending. Um, I did a memorize my line, so I'm reading off a postcard. Call anyone. <laughs> yeah, you, you said it. <laughs> kidding. When I was yeah, showing was... live, when I was showing live, like I had to get out of the room because I didn't want to see myself do this. Mm. And then here's my uh, last comedic bit. <laughs> anyway, I sure really don't. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Awesome. Uh, maybe yeah, maybe I'll actually upload it uh, six years too late. I yeah, to this like, day, I still haven't seen the. <laughs> I still haven't seen it. So I, I was always curious. It'll be, yeah, it'll be always interesting for all these other people in the band. As every senior, and, like, right. I gave them five minutes. It's a lot of time. <laughs> also, I think my webcam camera is dying. Oh no. Yeah, it has the little bar <laughs> oh, at the bottom. Right. Do you want to do the rest just audio and then I'll just <laughs> throw a picture of myself? Um Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> right, sick. Uh I'll stay on cam, I guess. I can I can edit it in post. Okay. I can just throw a picture of you when it dies. That's fine. Um so it'll it'll die when it dies. <laughs> <laughs> it'll die when it dies. Yeah. Um yeah. That's but yeah. That, that's my trip down memory lane. Yeah. Any uh, any other band memories or stories or dramas that you noted down before we move on? Because uh, we we spent a fair amount of time in this <laughs> section. All, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think mo most of it we just talked about it. Um, sexy saxes, band banquet films. Uh, I think on the last one I want to talk about is um, my surprise this being like being chosen to be the publicist in my sophomore year because the way leadership positions are chosen is like sometimes the senior just recommended you or like whoever just recommended you and then that year uh kevin guerrero 
uh, recommended me and Taylor Morales to be um, the publicist, even though like I never had <laughs> that close of a like talking relationship to Kevin. But he saw something in me. I was like, hey, this guy could be the publicist. And then I was. And then now <laughs> I, I did a lot of these things. And I think it's really cool just to be like noticed by like someone, you know, and then being given an opportunity. And, like even though you at that moment do not know what to do in that opportunity, mm-hmm. just kind of roll with it. And I think that's just like uh, kind of a testament to a person's strength and seeing how far mm-hmm. they go. And hopefully I made it far, Kevin. <laughs> I hope I made you proud. <laughs> well, other than that, um, I hope all these like uh, moments just serve, like I said before, like showing that community and camaraderie, and it's like definitely made me the person who I am today, and like help me develop all that fun stuff. Yeah, and it's definitely one of those things where you get what you put in. Mm-hmm. So if you're just one of those people that, you know, showed up to all the events and then, you know, went home after, you're probably not going to get out as much as someone who is there, like, 24-7 in the yeah. band room. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, like, I was there, like, from um, the end of school all the way to, like, well, it's, like, six. It's, like, the end of drum line practice. And, like... Even though, like, sometimes you just, I just went with my friends and hung out and at the old fresh and easy, uh, yeah. rest, rest in power, king. Rip. <laughs> but, it's, um, it's still physically yeah. there. It's just, <laughs> no, it's, like, it's just a shell, dude. It's, it yeah. hurts. It, yeah. it hurts. But, um, this uh, being one of those people who, like, uh, cared about the band enough to, like, stay there for a while. It's like either I'm, like, practicing or like, doing my homework or stuff like that. Yeah, it's just yeah. the community to be in. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we were we were there pretty late sometimes. Like the latest, I was there like maybe eight, nine that night. It was mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let's move on to, um, the post tsunami, and uh, <laughs> after what? the waves. Yeah. So, so what happened after the waves, RJ? Like, what are you doing now? So like, uh, like most seniors sometimes, like at the end of school year, like I do like the college application stuff and whatever. Um, I actually applied to like, uh, like Cal Poly Pomona, Cal uh, Cal Poly Slow, and like CSUCI for computer engineering or like computer programming major. But then like at the very end of um school like i just decided just to stay at home for a little bit and uh keep doing what i've been doing which is music like playing saxophone and stuff so i went to ventura college uh studied music there um while also like learning um learning about myself and like dealing with my insecurities and stuff like that and um i think honestly being in a community college uh, this gave me kind of like a safety net, but also gave me like enough time just to actually like figure out uh, stuff like stuff that I'm good at and like stuff I want to do and like my um my ideals that I want like in in my life and whatever. So then I stuck with uh, music for two years. Then I had an opportunity to study music education at CSUN, so I went for it. So. I finished my undergrad at CSUN doing music education. Then uh, I spent two and a half years at the credential uh, program at CSUN. Mm-hmm. Because to be a teacher, you need, like to be a certified teacher, you need an undergraduate's degree and then either pass a test or get waived for that test and then enter credential program. And then hopefully, in um, a year and a half, uh, you're able, you got a teaching credential through a whole bunch of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Basically like an internship and all that fun stuff. And yeah, now for the past year, I graduated a year ago with my um, music, uh, my credential in music. 
and I spent this past year working as a substitute teacher for mm, um we're at- so it's for the Oxnard Union High School District. So I was able to work in that district, but I mostly did it uh, at CI and Wainimi. Fun yeah. fact: my my last uh, basically my last week uh, before the whole Corona incident back in March. Well, we're demonetized on YouTube now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Corona, Corona. Oh, it's cool. But um. <laughs> Uh, I actually was subbing for Mr. Terrell's class for that entire week because he was um oh nice uh, taking that week off. That must have been an that must have been an interesting experience. <laughs> yeah, because like it's kind of like because <laughs> I was only scheduled for that one week, and that week happened to be the week before they closed down the schools, right? Mm-hmm. So like on Monday, like everyone was all like things are like normal and <laughs> stuff like that and then by like tuesday you hear like the little inklings of like hey there's something serious going on <laughs> yeah and then like by like thursday and it's like yeah it's kind of really bad <laughs> and then friday we get the announcement and it's like mm-hmm. school's closed indefinitely and it's like well um I hope you kids will be okay. Uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I I feel kind of bad for the seniors. You know, they like they basically lost the second half of their senior year. Yeah, and it's like um, my sister too, because uh, she graduated this year, mm-hmm. and it's like it's kind of like a harsh reality. Yeah, they have to deal with. But it's like I've seen me working with the seniors in band and stuff like that, and like working for the band in general. They really come like super far, and I'm I'm they'll be fine. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know those millennials, they'll be fine. Or what, the Gen Zs? <laughs> These, <laughs> they're um, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Uh, it's... yeah, they'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun working uh, with the band. They were doing uh, Music Man. They were starting to work oh, on Rumble yes. with the High Plains. Uh, oh wow! You're just bringing me back to my my sophomore or your freshman year now. Yeah, they only did one piece. I don't really know, but everyone hated Rumble in the High Plains. Really? No, it's I like freaking, they, I loved that piece. <laughs> it's funny because like um, like I talked to like some of the trumpet people, and it's like, yeah, it's fun for like the horn players and the trumpets sometimes, but then you just kind of just wait around, and I think. They just got that piece, right? So, like, their percussionists uh, still need, like, a lot of time on it. Yeah, it's it's a big percussion piece, I remember. Like, That's there's right. the there's a solo between... Like, the um, Mollies and, uh, and another uh, pitch drum. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was glad to be able to come back and work with them, as well mm-hmm. as, like, Mr. Terrell's other ensembles. Mm-hmm. It's like the guitar and strings and like the music technology one. Hmm. So are you technically still a sub for the district? Um, Technically I am. I don't know how school is going to work out <laughs> next year. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to like find more like music positions that will be opening up. I know there's an elementary school around here that's looking for like a a first grade through eighth uh, teacher or a K through eight music teacher. And then um, I interviewed last year with a music advocacy group uh, based in Oxnard called OMEG. So like they've been keeping me up with stuff. But till now, I'm a man of the sub or uh, I'm a man of the music credential. <laughs> did, did it line up with what your high school self like saw your future self if that makes sense i think uh in my high school year like i didn't have that foresight because i was too like focused on um things closer to me if that makes sense like time wise because like i was still like worrying about um if i'm still gonna like gonna go to college for something um what am i gonna study um it's like (laughs) what am i gonna do with my life yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure we all had that moment. <laughs> yeah, but being in community college and like just keeping at it with something I've been doing 
since fourth grade um really helped me like discover like even though like music uh studying music is like extremely hard especially for me who like has never taken a lesson in their life and like like many other people never taken a lesson never studied a music theory seriously had no really understanding what goes on with like the classical music world Mm -hmm. like even like jazz performance and stuff like that like i didn't really learn how to improvise like and understand what improvising was until uh um i did jazz band in community college right yeah yeah i mean we had we had jazz band in high school but Troy would be like, all right, here's a blue scale. You know, as long as you're playing the notes on the blue scale, you'll be fine. <laughs> you should, you like, be good fine. luck. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, we uh, didn't have the opportunity to learn, like, that higher level understanding of, like, how jazz actually worked. Mm-hmm. And, like, in a lot of ways, for me transitioning from high school into, like, um, uh, Ventura College music program, was like, a lot of accomplished musicians and also like a lot of like musicians like um learning and i was like really naturally talented or seemingly mm-hmm. naturally talented um it felt like being like a big fish in like a small pond with high school yeah because like honestly like i was like one of like one of the top musicians there mm-hmm. in a way and then going into like being being that big fish suddenly like one of the smaller fishes in like this really extremely bigger pond oh yeah 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 yeah. i get that feel from going into college too yeah but um i'm glad and lucky that the instructors i met were like so supportive the program that i was in was so supportive um the people i met in my class were like so supportive mm-hmm. and, like if it wasn't that way i probably wouldn't have continued but having their support and just realizing, like, the opportunities and support, like, Mr. Terrell and Mr. Bond have given me. Mr. Bond being the, my middle school band director and also my elementary school band director or music teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, by the end of the two years I spent in Ventura College, I'm like, I made up my mind that I wanted to be able to give those opportunities that they have given me back mm-hmm. to my community, back to like um kids who are in the need right yeah so i think that's why i ultimately stuck with music education because because of like the opportunities like the band community has given me and like my teachers and my professors like i wanted for me personally to give that back to um the people that need it the people that um i'm gonna be like be working with and stuff my community and yeah, that's why I studied music education <laughs> <laughs> and did all that really hard stuff mm-hmm. so that I could just do this. Yeah. With um with music education, is there anything different that you learned versus like just regular education? Like is there like a big difference between teaching music and teaching like English or math, for example? I think what I learned early on or I didn't learn this not early on, but I didn't learn this until working with one of my, we call them master teachers, mm-hmm. um, which is basically when you intern or you spend your year student teaching, you have like the the actual teacher and then you being able to run like a part of the class or yeah. a whole class. Excuse me. There's um one thing I learned from him because he's a music th- teacher, right? In the element era middle school. And then watching him basically subbing a class for like an hour because it's like a weird mixed schedule that day. He was teaching like a special education, like English portion of the class. And then just seeing him, how he basically worked with those kids. It's kind of like how he worked with kids in band. And just like what I realized from him is um good teaching or um uh, yeah, good teaching is just good teaching. Like there's like these fundamental core aspects of like um the art of teaching, which is like yeah. supporting students, which is like uh making sure that they're heard, 
um, making sure like the classroom flows in a certain way and like your lesson plans, even though if you don't have the lesson plans, things start flowing in a certain way. Uh, not giving students like a lot of time to be like confused or something like that. And like always reiterating. Yeah. And like good teaching is just good teaching no matter what your subject is. Right. There was, um, there was an interesting technique that one of the band directors, so let me, let me take it back. Yeah. Um, so I'm in the Ventura County concert band and usually we practice at Buena High's band room. Mm -hmm. But there was this one time where we couldn't practice at Buena High's band room for some reason. I think they had their open house. Yeah. Something like that. Um, so we went to the neighboring junior high. I forgot which one. It was some junior high in um, Ventura. Yeah. And our main director, Julie, um, was out. And so we basically had like a sub band director. And he was the current band director at that junior high that we were at. Mm -hmm. um and i remember feeling this is probably i don't know like earlier in the year <laughs> actually this year um i felt like a kid back in class because you know he was used to teaching yeah um, junior high and middle school students and he had this technique i don't know if it has a name it probably does but he has this technique where he will ask three students um like a question for understanding yeah so and and he makes it very clear like if you don't be afraid to say the wrong answer or don't be afraid to admit that you don't know because mm -hmm. if there's one student that doesn't know there's probably someone else in the class that also doesn't know yeah so he picked three students and he asked them like for example like i don't know what's the definition of a car for example right mm. so he would ask three students like what's the definition of a car and if all three of them um like got like said you know like the wrong answer he would clarify yeah clarify yeah. it um which i think is an interesting technique i don't know if he if, if all three of the students got right like <laughs> if if he just moved on but he made it a point um it was basically like a clarification step. It yeah. was him trying to gauge yeah. the understanding of the students. And I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. And so I really... Yeah, right, so, ahead, like, yeah. so like that's a common technique, basically uh, checking for understanding. Um, uh, so like a lot of the techniques I've learned, like um, learning how to be a teacher, right? Like I... <laughs> I don't really remember my teachers doing it. Maybe yeah. it's like... <laughs> because you're so busy, like, like, oh, I don't want to get called on. I hope they don't call me kind of thing. Yeah, it's like there's, like, the double, like, thing of, like, maybe I was anxious about it or maybe they did it well enough to where, like, I don't remember it, yeah. right? But, um, yeah, checking for understanding is, like, sometimes what teachers, like, a lot of teachers don't really do. And yeah. then, like, at least just leads to so much confusion. Of like let's say like you're giving an instruction like to write an essay it's like i need this essay done five paragraphs and like uh like five paragraphs like 1.5 or like double space and stuff like that and then if you do not clarify it then and there like with the students to make sure they don't understand they will ask you questions about it like every single day yeah and it's like uh, you need, as a teacher, you need to make sure your students have it. Because, like, if one of them, as you said, one of them doesn't have it, there's a, there's a high enough probability that another student will have the same question but doesn't want to answer or just doesn't understand. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, some teachers don't get into that, allowing students to, like, have allowing students to not know an answer being like a, an answer to a question, right? Like it, we were taught like a binary of like, either you have an answer or you don't. And yeah. if you don't, you're probably wrong. Like right. Sometimes if you're right, you're wrong. Um, allowing students like this to fail and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, I think that's something that school needs to do a better job of is teaching kids like how to fail and admit failure so that they can be successful 
<laughs> that and that's sense. the yeah, and it's like that's the thing about music education too. It's like what do you do in um music classes most of all the time when you're learning a piece? Mm -hmm. You like you fail. You fail a lot. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you don't in that environment, I you're taught just to like, you know, to keep going, learn from those mistakes and stuff like that. And like that's just one aspect of why like uh, whenever I talk to teachers, you know, like even like um, teachers, like other degrees and fields and stuff like science or like um, English or like mathematics, music has those same like, like fundamental like lessons that applies yeah. into like those different uh, fields. Like uh, we do a lot of reading um like in music right like mm -hmm. we just not just like reading like english or stuff you like read a lot of music and stuff like that mm -hmm. um mathematics in music is like derived from like both like the written notation of it because like everything needs to be in a certain place and like fit a certain structure yeah but also like um we hear it Right, you hear like the drum beats. You hear like if things are like going faster and smaller. Yeah, and like we hear like different frequencies, and like for like science, like different frequencies. Like how does mm -hmm. like um why does an alto saxophone sound different from a trumpet, and like stuff like that. Music is like has all those um like qualities and more, and like I that's like a reason why I'm always like advocating for music in schools. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's not just like, it's not even each subject has like a individual like cue, but that they exist in like everything's like uh, multi-sectional with each other and things like that. Yeah. The, the great thing about music is that there's, there's like a product. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, and that yeah. being like the music or like the audio that gets created, whereas with, you know, like math or science, when you're learning those subjects, there's not necessarily like, like a product that end. occurs that that happens at the end. So I think music is great for the people that are like they're like doers, and that's sort of their like learning style. Mm -hmm. Um. They learn by doing, which is the Cal Poly motto. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think like music is great for those kinds of people. Yeah, it's like there's a hands-on approach to it. Yeah, and then like also like the thing I learned uh, like at the tail end of my um, experience being learning how to be a music teacher is that you could incorporate like so much more, like in terms of like um, having students understand like. Oh, understand holistically like what the music is yeah like it's one thing to play like a susa march but it's like another um like another thing to understand why you're playing a susa march why is the susa march effective who is mm -hmm. susa why does this march like um have that effect on me like sometimes we forget that um music is supposed to have like this emotional yeah. kind of reaction and like cuz uh the last podcast we uh I know you and Andrew talked about uh pictures at an exhibition, yep. right? Baba Yaga and the uh, Great Gate of Kiev. Like imagine if we not only just played it, right? But like we internalized what those paintings were. We yeah, internalized why those two sound really different. Why one sounds like scary and frantic and the other one sounds like bold and stuff like that yeah that's something that i learned being in the ventura county concert band is that like there's it's one thing to play the piece and play it well but to internalize like the context of that piece and putting yourself in that environment right yeah like yeah. you know if we're playing like phantom of the opera for example like imagine being <laughs> there <laughs> um in that distress of mm. the movie or whatever the play yeah uh, and then stuff like that yeah and then in turn as like students studying that music you're you're gonna like 
have that internalization and apply that through the music and then have it be that way you know yeah yeah and that's one thing that's one of the things i really like about band is that um when you're playing when you're in that i guess that's one of the things i like about concert band is that when you're playing that piece you're you're put into that environment and like nothing else matters like yeah at that yeah moment. yeah that whole in the moment thing too is like yeah. super important yeah because um sometimes with other subjects you don't get to feel that way you know yeah it's like if you're doing like a math test you most often won't feel like um you're in the moment it's just you and your pencil yeah it's just and you're just like banging through it yeah it's just kind of you know it or you don't kind of thing well like, and music, like, not like that. yeah it's like it's just one of those things it's like you just you're in the moment like in the right mindset and then you just do it and it's like it doesn't at that moment it doesn't really matter if like you mess it up or <laughs> you you don't but um uh, you just do it and then and all that fun stuff that comes after it it's like being anxious about it or being proud of yourself <laughs> and i think music education is just a that really important aspect in um in today's education and especially it's one of the things that kind of like irked me too is um not irk, but um made you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh I don't think like people really really know how to like appreciate music in a certain way. Yeah, in terms we... of, like um sometimes like it's okay to use it like as um like things to like um like basically uh work as a companion as like things you're doing like i do it all the time like i listen to music like as i walk or like do other stuff yeah, yeah. there's a, there's another act of listening to music and when it's just like you and the music and it's like you just kind of like understanding it and like, yeah feeling it. that that act of listening that we don't really do instinctively i don't know like we don't <laughs> we weren't really taught like you know yeah the song and like really digest it and um, yeah hear all the different parts and really yeah, internalize like, it yeah it's like that's like something no one's ever really taught and like i would like to start teaching it like has have yeah. a certain amount of time you know it's like teach students how to listen to music yeah and like it sounds pretty obvious right like yeah. it's just, you just plug it in your ears and you just do it but there's like another layer of like actively listening to it it's like yeah. it's like you're listening to like a band i listened to like recently like i found listening to like the strokes right and it's like i'm gonna listen to this um this song uh i'm gonna listen to it just the bass line because i really like the bass line and then i'm gonna yeah. listen to it again or like see how the drum like backs up that bass line and things like yeah that. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and it's like at the end of the day, music's supposed to be fun, right? Whether you play it, whether you listen to it, uh, it's supposed to like give you a reaction. And sometimes I feel like we're missing we're missing that in like uh, today's life. Yeah, I feel like yeah. a lot of people who like either don't like listening to music or like just um, treat music as a commodity, and then it's mm -hmm. like. <laughs> yeah, there's there's more to that than you know a commodity, and yeah, it's and, like... and it's not just background noises, you know. Because I mean, I'm I'm kind of guilty of this too. Sometimes I'll play music and it's just you know something to put in the background. Yeah, but it's like even then you're like, for me, it's like treating a music treating music as a companion, mm -hmm. right? So it's like it's something that's with you, mm -hmm. and it's like something that's comforting. And like I understand that. But like sometimes just people like dismiss music for whatever reason. Mm. And it's kinda sad. <laughs> yeah. It's like especially like even like live venue performances. Like um a lot of students, whether but like a lot of younger students I found, especially in like low income um like parts of neighborhoods and stuff, they don't have that like experience of like being in front of like a live musician and things like that mm -hmm. 
I honestly never went to a concert until like after high school or like um, yeah <laughs> like a concert by myself like after high school mm-hmm. but it's like there's such a feeling you get like um whether it be like a concert hall or like a small rock venue mm-hmm. of like the music reverberating through the area yeah you start to like feel it feel the people around you yeah it's not just sound going in your ear like there's like a feeling <laughs> Yeah, it's like hard to explain if you haven't been there. Yeah. But um it's it's <laughs> it's it's hard. It's hard being a teacher. Oh and yeah. And like um cuz like uh my first uh quote unquote gig for like student teaching was um at a high school at a low income like neighborhood, right? And I've been at LAUSD um, if you don't know, it's the second biggest school district, <laughs> but also they don't have um, enrollment like typical, like what you see in most school districts is based by neighborhood. Yeah. They have enrollment based on choice. So you could mm. choose to have your kid attend that high school, like that's like close by, but it's in a bad neighborhood, or you could try to get them to apply and like the next high school, a city over. It's supposedly the good one. Yeah, that that sort of system promotes like a socioeconomic. Yeah, and then yeah, know, classism. I, guess, like, I don't yeah. know what's the word. <laughs> and then at that point, um, that forces the high schools to like basically advertise their programs, mm-hmm. like to different middle schools. It's like, hey, you should come here. And like on one end, it's pretty good because like the high school I went to has like a medical academy. Oh, and that's like cool. a kind of like a games academy, but on the other hand, if those programs aren't enough, it leads to low enrollment, but then low enrollment just leads to loss of money, and loss of money leads to loss of opportunities, and yeah, loss of yeah. opportunities <laughs> to spiral from there. Yeah, yeah, because like, I know yeah. a lot of school districts. It's um, the money you get is based on attendance, right? Like the number of students. Yeah. How many show- students show up that day? is how much money you're going to get from an allocated budget. And then um, uh, when you don't meet those numbers, you're, as a band, one of the key hallmarks of, like, a band program, a research program, is, like, constant fundraisers, mm-hmm. right? And, like, right. that's how bands are supposed to make their money. Yeah, on the back end. But, like, at that point, you're... You're taking, you're teaching students not to be better musicians, but better entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's <laughs> the business end. I wasn't a big fan of the business end of the band. Like, I didn't really care about that. But mm-hmm. um, I talk a lot about business with the episode with Andrew, yeah. but um, that's something that I'm more interested in now. Is like sort of the business back end of yeah. of it doesn't even, it doesn't even need to be a business. It can be like a nonprofit, like like a marching band. You know, yeah. how do they financially um, fund themselves and yeah. to keep the program going and yeah, to have the band like, go to all these events? Yeah. And like the other end of my like um, uh, my, my internship, basically my student teaching, I was um, teaching at a middle school, like in like a kind of like almost the Burbank area, like just at the end of it. So it's like more more affluent so it's like a lot of and it's like it's a part uh part charter school right so like it's more prestigious to get into yeah and like a lot of students in that music program um they actually came from like music backgrounds so like they're um because it's like in la they're like um their dad was probably like a studio musician or like their mom played like flute in the orchestra stuff like that and like people have like businesses like where people are doctors and whatever uh, they were able to open up a nonprofit for their middle school and then have all their donations go through that nonprofit. And then um, they're able to use that nonprofit for like things like new risers and like mm-hmm. new music and stuff like that. But like going back into like how our school is structured and how the high school I went through structured, it's like we don't have those opportunities because we don't, yeah. we're basically quote unquote the ghetto. <laughs> And like those um those weird differences and like uh 
being at a school with more money and like can have more money than being like in those other schools like it's it's a real challenge like um today's day mm-hmm. and uh, it's 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 always tiring for me to think about yeah because you know you don't have the resources to give the opportunities yeah. that you want to give to to the students yeah um, so like as teachers we rely on brands and like we rely on um the fundraisers like fundraisers yeah. being on uh, entrepreneurs <laughs> and then maybe we can't afford that 1800 uh venue at the oc pen yeah yeah but um so, that's yeah that's something that we i think our band did really well back then is making the best of what we had like we didn't really have much in terms of like finances um mm-hmm. But we did what we could with the resources we had. Yeah, we were extremely resourceful. Yeah. And, like, even then, we didn't even, like, need that much, <laughs> to be honest. We just needed places to play in. And, like, Terrell was able to get us that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, hey, that's, like, the strength of, um, I think. Because, like, in that, um, in that uh, high school that I taught at, with that low-income area, like there are still like some pretty amazing leaders and like there's still like a camaraderie with all of them so like that band also was like probably like 10 or 12 people at most it's a really small band and like they are kind of like doubled by their auxiliary which is Mm -hmm. like also like 10 people it's like the tall flag and stuff yeah yeah. but like they just had like such a bond with each other Mm -hmm. and like i think when you don't have a lot like sometimes you have like all you need, you know. But it's like as teachers, you want them to have more. <laughs> oh <laughs> like yeah, your, your babies. And it's yeah. Like, um, also yeah, too, like yeah, they um they gave they gave you like this send off goodbye, and it's like this giant poster board with like messages they wrote to me, and it's like oh, oh that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you more. That's really sweet. But I'm restricted by. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you can kind of empathize with them because, you know, we didn't come from, like, a school that had a lot of money either. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but it's, like, but, like, being, but, like, you didn't have a lot of money, but we had a lot of opportunities, you know, to, yeah. like, grow ourselves and things like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, we had to make them <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> and, like, that's, that's, like, that's, like, in life, you know? Yeah. Like, one of the most important things that I've learned from my grandmaster teacher is that um the mo- the most important thing you could do as a teacher, like even like if you mess up your, your lesson plan for the day or like um things don't go your way, the most important thing you could do is teach your students about life. And I think the my my most influential teachers uh didn't really just teach me about like the subject matter, but they taught me about life. Whether mm-hmm. it be like uh, overcoming a struggle, whether it be like um, uh, how to manage and organize my time, like those things go beyond the subject matter. And with right. the with the subject matter, you could teach that. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, uh, we're put in this life to live, <laughs> and you <laughs> uh, you learn basically life from um, the wise people around it, the people who look up to er, yeah. people you look up to. And like that's also why um, I'm striving to be the best teacher I could be for my students, mm-hmm. so that I could give them advice, wisdom, and teach them about life. You yeah, know? that's yeah. yeah. I think that's great because with with school, we tend to teach things that aren't like directly applicable <laughs> to like society and how to live life, and you know all those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, so anytime you can like inject that into you know your lesson plan to yeah you know have students bring that along with them um i think that's like pretty great (laughs) yeah it's like even like some people are like math doesn't teach me anything and stuff like that well it's like for me math taught me algebra which means 
I could just create like a, a framework and then just plug different things in and see how they affect the thing. Mm-hmm. Like calculus, the idea of like derivatives and intervals is like there's you could add like a complex layer above it or below it. Um, I really enjoy physics because <laughs> I I watch a lot of skateboarding videos. Oh, really? Time. <laughs> but like how things rotate and like how the skateboarders could do everything. Mm-hmm. I don't know. The people who like don't really like school often didn't find or didn't like realize how much uh, there is in school, you know, like how much more of it um, that could be applied in your daily life. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes school is the bummer, (laughs) to be honest, like the way it's structured. Yeah. Stuff like that. That was definitely, that was definitely my mindset in college. Like why am I, in this class yeah it doesn't really help with what i'm like what i want to do in my career yeah it's like sometimes mm-hmm. you just have to look for a silver lining yeah but uh, yeah. i don't know it's, it's 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 exciting to be a new teacher it's also mm-hmm. really horrifying to be a new teacher <laughs> <laughs> nowadays um but you know with everything like the bands taught me what music has taught me is that like I've been through a lot and I I could overcome things. You know, just keep going at it. If you mess up a message, just keep going. Yeah, just keep going. I think uh, I think it'd be interesting to do an episode with you and Julian because Julian's a yeah science a teacher. science teacher up in uh, NorCal now. Yeah, so I think that would be an interesting podcast to have you two on. Yeah, I think um, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> We don't have too much time. We got five minutes left. Um, so let's move on to the four, what I call the four ones. Really. Oh, yes. The, the interview questions. Yes. Um, so, I'm here to apply for the job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So your future goals are where you see yourself in a week, a month, a year, a decade. Yeah. So I just go, go down it? Yeah, you can go down the list. Um, All right. Here it goes. Uh, bullet, bullet time. Uh, one week. <laughs> Hopefully, getting a official job as a teacher in one month. Hopefully, be back at schools. I, I don't know about the current. I don't situation. know about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, in one year, be a music teacher somewhere, and then one decade, be a music teacher, but also own a pop up restaurant over the summer. <laughs> because I've always am keen into the idea of having a pop up eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's something that you can work on, like during the summer <laughs> as yeah. a teacher because i it's like i, I work think on that's myself and yeah and yeah. like it there yeah cool and it it, it it would be cool to kind of incorporate like the teaching aspects with like that pop-up like business aspect i don't know what you would teach i don't know <laughs> um because my my <laughs> if i could get it working i would like to like have this pop-up but also like a a way to fund my 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 music program. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know, how, like uh, like Buena High uh, at the VC Parade it has like this um the funnel cakes, the funnel cake stuff. Like I learned that like that's how they get most of their uh, marching band money. Like most of uh, all their marching band money. Mm-hmm. And, like marching band super expensive. Yeah, but like um they got donated. Like all the the stuff to start it up, and he just kept doing it. Maybe that could be that could be me. Yeah, that's a great way to you know provide funds for the band. Also, people listening, uh, I put a link. There's a website called Donors Choose. Um, in this website, it's a bunch of like it's kind of like GoFundMe, but specifically for classrooms. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you ever want to donate some money to help some teacher, <laughs> DonorsChoose.org is the way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll put it. I'll put it in the description and in all the platforms. Um, okay. There's two minutes left. Um, so let's wrap it up. Um, any shout outs <laughs> you want to give or where Heck people yeah. can find you? So uh, Andrew told me to shout out the line chat. Uh, I don't. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's just the uh, Andrew Angel and the uh, Amaro right. and I. Or like um we keep in touch with each other a lot yeah but then 
you know, people out there listening, keep in touch with your friends. Yeah, <laughs> most, that's... most of the times they're all you get. They're they're all you got. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have that. Uh, I also have a writing blog in which I talk about like um, sometimes games, sometimes visual novels, sometimes cartoons and anime and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's called the uh, Koopa Writes. So uh, Koopa Writes WordPress dot com. Also, I run a podcast called Koopa Talks with uh, co-hosts also in the line chat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm also on um, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, if you know any music, if you want to learn how to play saxophone, you can hit me up. <laughs> Are you doing private lessons? Not right now, no. But okay. I can. <laughs> I'll do it for you. <laughs> Give me like 20 bucks. I'll <laughs> teach you how to play B-flat scale. All right, RJ. Um, Thank you, Duke. Yeah, thanks for thanks for coming on. Thanks for teaching me more podcast stuff. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll see if we could do like a Julian RJ episode at some point in the future. Yeah, that would, maybe that I, could I, be like yeah. a special. Yeah, I think that would be cool. I love education talk. <laughs> All right, RJ, take it easy. All right, you too. Bye. Bye.